Andy with what is immune mediated polyarthritis? Go for it, Simon. Well, I think that's a really good question because it, it is a group of diseases. It's not just one straightforward condition, but essentially it's an inflammatory arthritis that is um, caused by inflammation in multiple joints, usually the distal joints. So the carpi, so the wrist joints at the, at the front and the um, hocks, so the uh, ankle joints at the back. And usually that's a sterile inflammatory response. So usually it's the immune system misbehaving or overreacting to cause inflammation in the joint that then is quite painful. So it causes swelling in the joint, which causes mobility problems. But if you can control the inflammation, there's no damage to that joint in the way that that's very different from osteoarthritis, where there's always gonna be a physical change in the joint. Immune mediated polyarthritis or IMPA, which is perhaps a little easier to say, is an inflammatory condition that if you can control the inflammation and understand the inflammatory process and get that under control, the joint should go back to having its normal function and the dog essentially is, is better as a result of that. Um, but that can be quite tricky to, to try and diagnose and then to manage and to try and treat. Um, most of the time it's what we call primary IMPA or primary immune mediated polyarthritis, which has got the condition of type one, which is essentially where the immune system just starts misbehaving and you get this inflammatory response. And most of the time you don't work out what the trigger to that is. So it's just an overreaction in the immune system, possibly caused by um, molecular mimicry. So the body is responding to something else. And in the course of responding to a virus or a bacteria or some other disease, we get inflammation in the joint that causes a problem. But occasionally it is caused or triggered off by other things in the body. So disease at other sites, the bacterial infections. So that's classically how Lyme's disease would cause joint inflammation. Um, or we can see it secondary to gut-based disease or to cancerous conditions. So uh, reactive arthropathies, ent enteropathic enteropathies and, and oncological entero uh, arthropathies, which are caused by disease in other places. And those become a little bit tricky to manage because they're things where um, we're trying to manage the underlying disease um, rather than we're trying to manage just the inflammation. So those are a little bit different from what perhaps we'll be talking about the rest of this evening. Yeah, I think that needs a little bit of clarification because I know as a vet myself, it gets really confusing with the different terminology. And depending on where you get your, your um, information from, people are using different terminology. It makes it even more complex. So would it be fair if we stick to the type, so type one to type four, or is, or is that too simplistic? I think that's, yeah, that, that is usually what people are talking about. And I, I guess the difficulty we're talking about inflammatory arthritis is because in, in, this is quite an uncommon condition in people. Most people, if they have an inflammatory or immune mediated arthritis, have rheumatoid arthritis, which is an erosive arthritis. So it's really damaging to the joint surface and therefore quite debilitating as a result. But rheumatoid arthritis in, in, in dogs is, is very rare. I think I've seen just one one case during you know, 15 years I've been in specialist practice. So it's, it's a very diff different condition in that regard. It's not something we commonly see. Whereas the inflammatory arthritis is they don't tend to damage the joint as such that they often refer to as non erosive. And then there is that category of, of, of one to four, but the two, three and four in that, which are the sort of unusual ones that are triggered off by something else are, are also quite unusual. We don't see those.